Um, we had a problem well, during the game drive. Those who are watching will have seen it. Uh, suddenly everything went uh, frozen. And the thing what happened is the converter, which converts our battery voltage to a normal uh, 220 voltage, uh, gave the ghost and it stopped working, um, which means that all our broadcasting equipment doesn't work. Uh, so now we have to actually quickly see if there's some, anything that we can do in it, or otherwise Kane will have to find another one as quickly as possible. Uh, that is probably going to be what we actually have to do. Uh, but on the off chance that there is something inside, I'm just going to open it up and see what's inside. Also to satisfy my curiosity to see what, what it looks like inside. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, probably we'll have to get another one. Um, I have to do some creative thinking about how we're going to do walks and stuff until we get one. Uh, Basically what we're going to do is just quickly climb up the mast. We have to rig up the rope and the safety and um, tie this on, onto me first and then once we're at the top of the mast, tie this onto the mast and then hopefully that gives us the ability to walk around, definitely camp but hopefully even a little bit further and they'll be able to look around and show you a little bit of camp itself and the immediate bush around it and the vicinity of it. So um, we'll do that quickly and we'll see you again on the ground just now. Good morning. It's a lovely morning here in Juma Game Reserve. As you know, unfortunately at the moment we can't take a drive out. We've got a technical problem that uh, we will still see exactly when we can fix it. It will probably involve flying a few things in and who knows what else. It's not always the easiest to find the things you need out here in the bush. So we'll see how that goes. But for the moment, as always, we make a plan. And uh, this morning we've been up on the mast and putting a few things up. And Pete was doing a few things last night. And basically, we're able to do this now. So um, yeah, welcome to camp. You've seen bits and pieces of it before, but uh, this will be our first sort of live walk around camp. This is the workshop area, but busy here last night, a couple of things around. Of course, as always, we couldn't have guessed that we're going to have many, many people visiting this morning. So uh, camp has looked better before, but uh, it's a living working camp. So just uh, sort of enjoy it for what it is. This is my bedroom. This is um, a couple of us that stay right in camp. My room and Herman's room, the one next door. Very comfortable accommodation as far as bush accommodation goes. A bit of uh, crates and this and that, sort of the, the backyard area. This is a place we should all spend more time in, but we don't always have the time. This is the, the gym. You can see you can... <coughs> you can... Uh... <laughs> Guys, I'm just messing around. It's a little bit early morning, so I'm going to try and make a joke. But yeah, you can do some exercise and um, hopefully stay in shape that, so that when we need to suddenly climb masts and change tires and carry things around, then we can do it. This is one of my favorite little pathways to another room. We come through here, this is where Pete Bright stays. You can see it was very windy last night. There's still an old little flag here from Alex's days. I see Pete still left it up for now. But uh, yeah, so a bit of the accommodation. And then if you stand here, we're gonna have to have a look into camp now, just like I said, we can't go too close. But um, this basically looks straight into the, the main area of camp, just to give an idea, the door in the back there, that's the door that takes you into the final control center. And there you can see a little bit of the log and the fireplace just behind. That's where we see our fireside chats. Tomorrow evening, Sunday evening, we'll have another one. A bit of a table outside to sit around and then yeah, behind the bushes, that door in there and that area there is the kitchen. Yeah, that's where we live and that's where uh, all the live feed goes through as well. Well, we are back again and hopefully this uh, solves the problem a bit more and um, we're just on the other side of the drainage line now from camp so basically all that thick lush green bush you see in the background there is uh, just between us and the camp um, we're going to walk around a little bit just see how far we can move and then we'll go back again towards the pond area and so on that we that we lost picture earlier and see maybe we get a better picture there now as well but let's just take a little walk around see what it's about there's lots of signs of elephants this typical stuff, you can see this is a good example of elephant breaking the whole branch off and chewing it off, basically eating the, the softer bark or the cambium stuff off the, the branch. With a bit of rain we had last night and if we get a bit more rain over the next day or two, it means all this grass will start flushing green and that will of course make a huge difference for all the animals, also for elephants, they'll start eating more and more uh, grasses again. 
This is probably one of the bigger pieces of landscaping that the elephants have done here. This was in the last few days. Um, this next little piece won't be live because of signal, but it's a beautiful little walk. It's basically the water course that's been created from all the grey water from camp. And uh, it's all clean water, but uh, it's just nice to see how it's developed. You've had these footpaths developing, a lot more animal movement than there used to be. So, uh, not nice walk nonetheless. This is the easier jump this side. We're just moving around and seeing what and where we can see. We've now come to the other side of camp. Uh, we'll just take a little walk away, have a look back at it as well. There's the, the, the main camp buildings, obviously. The FCC or the final control center is here to the right hand side. Pointing about right, Herman. Yeah. That's the final control center. You can see the mask going up a little bit to the left of it again. Uh, my room, Herman's room, the kitchen at the back of it. So we've now come to the other side. Earlier we were looking from the south and southwest. We now sort of straight on the eastern side. And then to the left again. The workshops here, you can see the tank and the babaloo. They're a little bit behind the bushes. And uh, the jiga in there, the workshop, which I'm sure will be in for parts of the day again. It's no strange thing to have wildlife in camp. Um, unfortunately, the washing line area that Karula is at so often, we couldn't really show it for signal reasons. But also just outside camp, between us and the Star Village, anywhere around here, there's various animals at all times. This is from, obviously, quite a large animal. I'm sure you can guess what it's from. It's about the same head. Reminds me of, um, what's that movie, Castaway, where Tom Hanks has got the football to talk to. Yes, no, we're not in the bush for too long. We don't start talking to elephant dung, that kind of thing. Very, very big elephant. Don't know which elephant this was, maybe even wonky a while back or so. But um, lots of things that come right through this area here as well. Just from early this morning, I'd say probably within the last hour, hour and a half or so. There's not even insects inside the dung yet. Just the odd little fly or so. So in the last hour or two, this elephant could very likely still be in the general vicinity. There's his track. He was actually heading back in sort of camp direction. There's also a daker track over it. So again, that shows us probably two, three hours ago. It would be fantastic if we could see this little bird. It's not a bird we see very often. They're quite shy. But let's just see if he jumps out. See, there he goes. It's a bird that likes the thicker stuff. You can see there around where trees have been pushed over maybe a year or two ago by an elephant. Got all that grass and dead material around it. Perfect place for birds like the chagra and robins and so on to find some food in. Today, Pete was saying that um, he's heard a red-chested cuckoo. Pit may fro. Just heard one calling there. <whistles> all the different summer birds. I know Pete. We learned yesterday he was talking about the migrants. Yesterday we heard uh, European bee eaters. Um, Pit may fro or the red-chested cuckoo now. Uh, woodland kingfisher. So lots of summer signs, and certainly with the rain last night also. Adding on to that, quite soon I think we'll start having the, the lush greenness of summer as well. Looking forward to that. For the moment, thank you for joining us. A bit of an experimental walk to see what and where we can do. I'm sure there's going to be lots more thinking and planning done now. And there'll be another surprise for you this afternoon. Obviously, we will keep you updated as well relative to, to the game drive and what's happening there. Um, I know that Graham is probably using both ears with two different telephones phoning around trying to find the parts. Not always the easiest thing, but... Uh, as Graham always says, and everyone else here, it's in our nature. We'll keep doing everything we can to uh, share some of the space out here with you. One if you I don't think you can hear it probably. This little pal mic's not that great for fast sounds, but there's a little robin singing so loudly there that I feel like I'm competing against it. <laughs> it's amazing to feel our like animals are excited. I'm feeling a little bit silly and excited as well just with the rain. So, um, yeah, thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Peter, Herman behind the camera, Simon and Pitt in the Live Control Center, and you're with Wild Earth. Stay on the water hole. Who knows what's going to happen? And uh, we'll see you this afternoon again for, for something else out as well. Bye-bye.